So for this question, we're asked to draw the shear and moment diagrams for the shaft. The bearings at A and D only exert vertical reactions on the shaft, so that means we don't need to consider horizontal reactions at those points. And the loading is applied to the pulleys at B, C and E. So to start this off, no matter what method we choose to draw the uh, diagrams with, we need to work out what the um, reactions are. So that's going to be my starting point. So let me redraw my free body diagram with the reactions. So we've still got these 360, 500, and 160 Newton forces going downwards. And at each of the bearings, we need a vertical force. And I'm going to guess they're both going up to counteract all these downward forces. So let's call this one AY and this one DY. And we have our equilibrium equations to be able to determine what they are. So I'm going to sum my moments at point A um, to figure out dy to begin with. So this is point A here, and ay acts through it, so it's not going to contribute to the equation. We've then got the 360 Newton force acting from this diagram at a distance of 350 millimeters, or I'm going to put it in meters, 0.35. And we can see that this is going to try and create a clockwise moment, so it's negative. We've then got the 500 Newton force, and it's going to be acting at the full distance in here of 850 millimeters, or 0.85 in meters. Again, it's trying to try and create a clockwise moment, so it's negative. We've then got dy, where it's going to be acting at this full distance in here, so 350 plus 500 plus 375 which is equivalent to 1.225 in meters. This one here is going to try and create an anti-clockwise moment, so it's going to be positive. And finally, we have this 160 Newton force. It's at the full length of the beam, this distance in here, which is 1.525 in meters, and it's going to try and go clockwise, so it's negative. So we can find out that dy has to be equal to 649 newtons. All right, now we need to determine what ay is, and we can get that just by summing forces in the y direction. So we're going to have ay going up 360, 500, and 160 going down, and then this one here is going up. So Ay must be equal to 371 newtons. Alrighty, so we've worked out these reactions. I'm just going to move this over here for a second so that I can draw my um, shear force and bending moment diagrams underneath. So we now need to pick a method for drawing these diagrams. And when you have really simple loading, so in these cases we've only got um, point loads, it's usually easiest to draw it with the graphical method. Um, if you had um, more complex loading, so for example distributed loads, then it tends to be easier to use the graphical method. So I'm going to go ahead and use, sorry, <laughs> it tends to be easier to use the equation method. Got that backwards. All right, so since we have simple loading, I'm going to try and draw this with the graphical method which means that I can basically jump straight in and draw my shear force diagram and it's going to have the units of newtons. All right, so remember that what we need to do is follow the forces as we move along the beam and remembering that we must start and end at zero. So at the beginning of this beam here, we go up 371. Nothing happens as we move through this section, so it's going to remain st uh, steady. We then need to go down 360. So 371 minus 360 is going to take us to 11. We keep going across because there's nothing happening in here. It stays stable. And then we need to go down 500. So it's going to be 11 where we were at minus 500 which takes us to negative 489. Again, there's nothing happening through this section, so we stay stable. And then we have to go up 649. So negative 489 plus 
649 takes us up to 160. Again, there's nothing happening through this section, so we remain straight until we need to be taken down 160. So 160 minus 160 takes us back to zero. So you can see that we've started and we've ended at zero on our shear force diagram, which is a good sign that it's going to be correct. All right, so that's the complete shear force diagram. Now we need to draw the one for bending. And I'm going to draw it with the units of Newton meters. Okay, so let's just quickly pop on all our um, measurements in here along the beam that we were given. So we've got, this has to be 0 0.35 meters, 0 0.5, 0 0.375, and 0 0.3. All right, so what we need to consider for our bending moment diagram in the graphical method is the areas that we have in the shear force diagram and also any additional couples that we have applied. And we don't have any in this case, so we can kind of just forget that part and just concentrate on the areas. So I'm going to start with the area in this section here. And what's going to happen is that as we take a little slice each time moving across the beam, we need to add on the total area. And what we observe is that if we have a flat line in the shear force diagram, it ends up becoming a uh, diagonal line on the bending moment diagram. And again, that's because we're taking the area under the curve, and as we take a little step across each time, we add a little bit more area each time, so it goes up and up and up. And we can figure out what the maximum value it kind of gets to at this point here. Um, it's just going to be the total area inside this, this section. So we've got a height of our rectangle of 371, and the width in here is going to be the 0 0.35 meters. So we end up with a total then of 129.85 in Newton meters. All right, so now we need to add on the next bit, um, which is this section in here. Again, it's on the positive side of our shear force diagram, so that means it's going to add on more area to our curve. If it's flat here again, it's going to manifest as a diagonal line on the next diagram. And we can work out the maximum that it gets to up here. It's going to be what we started with plus the additional area. So this point here is going to be at 129.85 plus the 11 times the width in here of 0 0.5. So we end up with this reaching 135.35. Um, and again, the units are Newton meters. So now what we see is that we end up on the bottom side of the curve down here, which is going to try and pull us downwards now on the bending moment diagram. Again, it's a flat line, so what we're going to see is that it becomes a diagonal line on the next diagram. Let's just scroll this down a little bit. Now it's actually going to cross over the axis and you can find out um, how low it gets. Again, it's what you started with, which was the 135. 0.35 and we need to take away the area in here which is 489 times the width which is 0 0.375 and you end up going all the way down to negative uh, 48.03 so now we just need to add on our final little section and we're adding because it's now again on the positive side of our shear force diagram and we would expect this to go back up to zero since we always have to start and end these diagrams at zero. But we can prove that that actually is the case. So this point is going to be what we started at, which is negative 48.03. And we need to add on the 160 multiplied by the distance over which it acts, which is 0 0.3 meters. And in fact, this should indeed come out to be zero. Okay. So that's the bending moment diagram drawn using the graphical method. So that's all the question asked us for was both the shear force and the bending moment diagram. So that's why I'll leave the question and I'll see you in another video.